Um, so I think this is everybody, or maybe the weather is stopping somebody, or maybe because there was some kind of a delay. Um, normally I would speak Polish, but just in case somebody comes in who doesn't speak Polish, I'm just gonna present this presentation in English, because for me it doesn't really matter all that much whether I speak Polish, English, whether it does, it, whether it does to you, I don't know. Uh, do you have any preference? Do you prefer I speak Polish, English? Doesn't matter, okay, cool. So um, I'm gonna present to you a, a little bit of a presentation about ASO, uh, ASO being App Store optimization. Uh, and I, I like to call it ABC of ASO because it has a lot of acronyms in it. So it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be a lot of acronyms which I'm gonna try and put in layman terms. And what I would like to present to you with this presentation is a little bit of an experience that I had about App Store optimization throughout my two and a half years working at Vivid Games. So uh, let us begin. So first of all, a little bit about myself and a little bit about um, and a little bit about Vivid Games. So my name is Marcin Kaszewski. I am the PR and marketing manager of Vivid Games. I am responsible for uh, PR and marketing for products, not corporate, though I do a little bit of corporate PR and marketing as well. And um, I've been doing this for two and a half years. I started as a community manager, then I went to be a PR manager. Now I'm the PR and marketing manager. So I. Um, I kind of grew during those two and a half years. Uh, I came a long way from being a games journalist. And I'm really happy with where I am right now. With Vivid Games being one of the best and one of the biggest uh, mobile, games develop uh, mobile game developers in Poland. And, uh, and yeah, so um, a little bit of a warm up to this presentation is, um, I took, uh, like, before when I was doing this presentation, I took, uh, a small look at my phone, at the screen of my phone. And I, I'm looking at this phone and I see 24 apps that I don't use which were installed with my system. And I see 74 more apps that I installed myself. And I, I, I'm looking at those apps and I'm thinking, okay, how many of those apps did I install that I actually you know, launched? And it actually came to my realization that out of the 64 gigabytes that I have on my phone, almost half of it, I didn't even launch it. I just downloaded it, and I, I was thinking, why did I download those apps? Why did I download, let's, let's not kid, us, kid ourselves, most of those are games, okay? Uh, so I, I'm thinking, why did I install those games? And the simple answer is, the, the simple conclusion that I came to was I installed those games because the icon looked cool. Not that, I didn't know what the game was about, I just, you know, every Thursday App Store, refreshes and you just go into the app store and you take a look at all those icons and you think, well, this looks cool. Maybe this is a game that I would like to play. Oh, this app looks cool. Maybe I would find it useful. Oh, and it's free. That's awesome, by the way. So, uh, so it's the same with books. A lot, of, a lot of times we go to the bookstore and we take a look at the shelf and we see a book that has an awesome cover and oh God, that's an awesome cover. I would like to buy this book but I'm not gonna read it, I don't have time to read it. But it looks so cool. And you just go in and buy it and you have it on your shelf and you take a look at it two and a half years later and did I even read that book? And, it, 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 and this is it, this is the essence of App Store optimization. You may create an icon, you create a, only an icon, you create more, which I will talk about during this presentation. You create a lot of stuff that you that, that are supposed to make people want to get your game, buy your game, download your game, or your app, uh, if you're an app developer. I'm a game developer, so I'm probably gonna keep calling this a game. Um, and you, you're thinking, you're creating basically marketing materials so that the player wants to download your game, no matter, he doesn't even have to know what the game is about. He, will, he must want to download your game based on the very first instance that he sees your game. And so what exactly is App Store optimization? Um, if you're familiar with SEO, SEO, whatever the abbreviation is spelled like, uh, it's uh, basically ASO is the same as SEO, but for apps on the App Store. But it, that is a boring explanation and it doesn't tell you all that much, right? And even when you say App Store optimization, what does it mean? Do you work for Apple? Do you optimize the App Store? No, I don't. I work for Vivid Gamers and I optimize my apps, my games for the App Store. 
and for Google Play and for any other digital platform that we release on. So what is the non-boring version of this definition? And I came up with this. Uh, it basically, ASO is the process that makes an invisible app appear and stand out in a crowd. And let's not kid ourselves, the App Store and the games that are released on the App Store is a freaking crowd. It's a giant. It is also the force that is responsible for love at first sight. It is uh, also what makes you go back and take a look, or turn around and take a look after a hot looking app walks past, or you walk past a hot looking app. Basically, this is what app store optimization is. And whether or not, that, from that very moment that app store optimization hits you, whether it, whether it turns into a happily ever after, or it will be a one night stand, that doesn't really matter. That's not the app store. That, that's not what app store optimization is for. App store optimization, app store optimization is for getting your attention, or getting the user's attention and having him download that game. What happens afterwards is a whole different matter. It it basically revolves whether or not your app is good or not. And app store optimization has hasn't got anything to do with it. App store optimization is getting user attention and having him download the app. So what do we actually optimize? What, 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 what does app store optimization regard? Well, it regards two things. First thing, uh, the first thing are the app name, keywords, and the store description. So the app name is pretty obvious, the keywords are pretty obvious, and store descriptions seem pretty obvious, and this is responsible for search optimization. This is basically what makes your app discoverable through the search function of the App Store. And these three are really important because if, if you don't configure those, if you don't optimize those, then the user will basically not find your game. And there's a lot of games out there, and there's a lot of apps out there, and he needs to find your game, and you need to really optimize those. And App, the app name, keywords, and the store description are all combined. They are all intertwined together. Basically, the app name are keywords, the keywords are keywords, and the store description are also keywords, especially on Google Play, which actually takes keywords from the store description, not like Apple, which, not, not, not like the App Store, the Apple App Store that has the keywords in a separate, uh, in a, entered in a separate way with 100 characters, and uh, also the app name being the keywords as well. So, and the other side of this is uh, conversion optimization. Optimization. Optimize. What am I saying? Uh, okay, so uh, this is actually icons, uh, screenshots, key art, and the app preview. This is conversion optimization. Basically, this is uh, getting the user to convert. And I'm, you might be thinking about conversion in terms of getting their money, but uh, what I mean by conversion optimization is getting them from the store page to the game itself. What happened afterwards doesn't concern me all that much with ASO. ASO isn't con uh, concerned with that. So you have to have a, this is what I talked about in the beginning. You have to have a cool icon so that the user, when he browses the app store, every Thursday he comes across your app and he wants to get it. You have to have cool screenshots because when he searches the App Store, he also sees your screenshots, at least the very first two. So you need to have really cool, at least two screenshots that he's going to see. Obviously, you need to have five screenshots, though, because when he enters your store page, he's going to see a lot more than just two. And you have to have a key art because whenever your app is going to be featured on the App Store, it's going to be displayed up there with all the other apps that are featured uh, by Google and by Apple. And then there's also the app preview, which is the video, which, is, which also serves kind of as a first screenshot, but is a lot more engaging than just the first screenshot because the user can basically click play. And when he clicks play, he's going to see a movie of your game. And very, very much so it happens that when they click play and when they watch the video, they're going to download your game or they're just going to leave the page because this shows a lot more than just screenshots. This is live gameplay for them. This is what the game is going to look like on their device. At least that's what they think. So this is really important. This is actually mm, as important. I wouldn't say it's more important. It's as important as search optimization because those two work together. They work to create the image of your game on the App Store and on Google Play and on any other digital platform that you release on. But there's more. There's actually more than just that. 
there's actually more because there's also localization. And localization is super important because if you plan on releasing the game in more than just one language, and trust me, you really do want to do that because let's not kill ourselves. Uh, the US, the UK uh, are just two countries. So you want to release the game in more languages, and you want those uh, you want those countries to get your game. And if they see English on the screenshots, and if they see English on the description, if they see English everywhere, and they, not everybody needs to know English. And if they don't see their native language, they're just gonna say, "Okay, screw it. I'm gonna go and get a game that's localized into my language. At least the store description is localized into my language, because so, so I can understand what the game is about." So it's super important, and it's super important because it regards both search optimization and conversion optimization. It's not just either or, it's both. Because you can localize not only the text materials, but you can also localize screenshots, you can localize icons, you can localize everything. Uh, obviously not just the text part of the graphics, but also the graphics themselves. You can have, for example, a Russian character on the icon, or you can have uh, an American character for the icon, and release those two on separate markets to get more conversion. Basically the goal of uh, App Store optimization is this. You have this cool uh, these two guys over there, and you see one of them is kind of like blending with the background. He's gray, and he's not all that much interesting, and basically col color is washing off of him, and that's before ASO. And then you've got the guy that's looking full color, very sharp, uh, very handsome, and he's after ASO, basically. So, why do you optimize? If it hasn't been clear uh, up to this point that App Store optimization is super important, then it will be when you see this. So more than half of the downloads on the App Store and Google Play that happen come from search. So the players are going to go into the App Store and they're going to type in some keywords that they're interested in, like boxing game or uh, awesome game. or They don't always type in the the name itself, the, the name of the app. They don't usually know the name of the app. They're just searching for, oh, I, I'm searching for a cool game. I would like to play a cool game, but I don't know what to play. Hmm, what games do I like? I like adventure games, so I'm going to type in adventure games. And they type in adventure games, and at this point, if your app doesn't pop up on the keyword adventure or game or adventure game, uh, they won't download your game. They're going to download the game that pop ups, pops up at the you know, that pops, uh, pops up at the top of the search ranking. Um, so it's super important that you optimize your search optimization with the texts that I mentioned in the previous slide. So um, store description, keywords, and app name. Then there's uh, the fact that more than three quarters of apps are invisible due to competition, and the competition is fierce. It's over three million apps on the App Store and Google Play combined, and those, are, those stats are actually outdated. I'm brief pretty sure it's more than three and a half million now, or even more. So with so many apps, it's super hard to find your game, or your app, or anything released on the App Store 3. And with over 4,000 apps uh, delivered daily, submitted daily by developers, uh, it's, th th these numbers are going to get very super higher. Every day they keep getting higher, and your app is basically competing with 4,000 more apps or more mm, daily more. So it's super important that you optimize. And basically, you know, uh, a little bit of self-promotion, if you didn't know, Vivid Games is the developer behind uh, Real Boxing to Rocky. Uh, so uh, I managed to get that in somehow to this presentation as well. So uh, basically, you can see on those screenshots that um, basically on the, fr the, the first screenshot, the first which is this one, actually. This is the first one I'm referring to. So you can see that there's a banner on the, up, up there. So it's super important. That w w um, basically, what's featured there is the key visual. So if you have a cool, cool key visual and the, uh, an Apple or Google uh, contact you and say, OK, your app is super awesome and we want to feature you. So you, you need to have a super cool key visual. If you don't have a super cool key visual, then maybe your, the, user will see, the user will definitely see your um, will definitely see the, see the banner, but is he going to click on it? And you don't want to take that chance. You want to you wanna maximize your potential for uh, the user to actually click that app. You, you want the user to go to your store page and see more of the game. 
and you can also see that best new games, right? So there's going to be a lot of best new games each Thursday, and you want your app to stand out. You want uh, the user who is going to scroll through all of those new apps because he's not just going to watch those three apps that display to him on the iPhone. He's going to scroll past every new game that was released this Thursday. And you want your app to catch attention. It doesn't matter whether or not um, your app is going to be featured on the first place or on the last place. He's going to scroll through everything there. And you want to get his attention. Obviously, if you get featured on the number one spot, that's going to be awesome. But if you get featured on the number fifth spot, which is not visible straight, uh, straight away, it doesn't really matter. As long as you have a cool icon, he's going to notice you. Then there's obviously the search, uh, search function, which you can see here. So if you type in Real Boxing 2, it's going to be the, uh, Real Boxing 2 is going to appear there, right? But you can see that an app below us, right? This, it has. Uh, it has vertical screenshots, and they catch a lot more attention than just those normal uh, screenshots. But obviously, not every game can do this. Not every game can have um, uh, vertical screenshots. Or can it? Yes, it can. Even a game with vertical, uh, vertical gameplay can have, um, vert uh, with horizontal gameplay, can have vertical screenshots. But it's a lot harder to actually do. And uh, it is a question of whether or not you want to sacrifice engagement for conversion, um, basically. And then there's the store page itself. And you have um, you have your icon, you have your app preview or your first screenshot, and you want it to be super cool so that the user actually watches the uh, you know wants to download this game as fast as possible. And there's two types of users on the app stores. There's actually two types of users. They're, they're explorers and visitors. So the visitors are those kinds of people that see the icon, see the first screenshot, maybe the second one, or just watch the app preview and they, OK, I'm going to download this game. It's super awesome. I want to download it. I want to play it right freaking now. And then there's explorers who basically just go inside your store page and check out the icon, check out the first screenshot, the other four screenshots as well. Then they go and read the whole description, check out what's new, everything. They're going to check out everything. And that's where they're going you know, to they're make the decision whether or, not to, uh, whether or not to download your game or not. So you want to cater to both of those. Obviously, explorers are the minority here. But they're still, impo they're still important customers to you. They should be. So you should cater to both visitors a little bit more to the visitors, though, and to the explorers as well. You don't want to single out the explorers, because they can bring, uh, bring you a lot of downloads as well. And th those first three screenshots are actually from the Apple App Store, and this, the, this last one is from Google Play. Why am I showing you Google Play since I showed you already the App Store and you know it basically is the same thing? It's actually not, because the search function for Google Play is well, basically a little bit different than, um, than on the Apple App Store. On the Apple App Store, you see two screenshots and the icon and the app name, obviously. And here you only actually see the developer, the app name, and the icon. No screenshots. So it's even more important that you optimize the icon for Google Play than for the App Store, because this is going to be the decision that the user is going to make right then and there. He's going to be searching for apps that you know, he's going to type in boxing game, and he's going to see this uh, rocky icon. And based on this, whether or not this icon is appealing to him or not, he's going to want to go in there or not. So it's super important that you get that there. And there's actually two ways to ASO. You can do it yourself, or you can work with somebody else. You can work with an ASO agency. And uh, there's uh, pros and cons to both of these approaches. The pro of working in-house is that you can do uh, everything yourself. Uh, the con is that you don't necessarily know how to do everything yourself because you're just learning. You're uh, thinking that you know everything, but you really don't. Um, you need to have a lot of contacts with localization experts because localization is not the same as translation. You can you. Obviously, you could have your keywords, send them to a translation agency, and they would translate it for you. But that's not the same as localization, because localization is, is making it relevant to that specific market. So for example, boxing is a cool term in English. But in France, from what I heard, from what I know, box anglais, or however you say it in French, is the more popular search phrase. It means the same as boxing, but it's 
English boxing. And to French people, this is possibly not the same thing. And boxing fans in France might be looking for box and glaze and not for boxing specifically. So you want to optimize that. You want to optimize that. And you don't necessarily know that yourself if you're starting App Store optimization yourself. And that means you could actually benefit from working with an ASO agency. Obviously, the con of that is you're going to have to pay money, a lot of money. Well, it depends on the agency, though. But the prices can be high depending on how many products you want to run uh, and what kind of services you want to actually get in on from them. There's a lot of variety there. And uh, when talking to ASO agency, I encourage you to talk with not just one, but check out offers from a couple of them. Because and <laughs> to be honest, I would even inform each and every one that you're looking at other companies as well, because you're going to get a better deal, uh, basically marketing. So, um, so yeah. So and. Uh, Obviously, what you need to know about working with an ASO agency, because I have been working with an ASO agency, they're not going to do everything for you. They're going to give you suggestions. They're going to suggest, OK, so uh, you have this icon. It looks really cool. But maybe you could try a different icon a little. You, you could change it up a little bit. How about putting in more emotion on this face? No, you can't do that. Then how about trying to mix it up with the backgrounds? How about trying a solid black background instead of the, uh, the solid blue background that you have? Because we've seen it work better. They have a lot of best practices in their heads. They have a lot of best practices because they're working with a lot of companies and they've tested using those companies what works best on the App Store. They're doing their research. And obviously, this is something you could do yourself. Research is something that you can do yourself. For marketing materials like icons and things like, and uh, screenshots, you can just check out the competition and check what they're doing. And if it's working for them, maybe it's going to work for you. That's, that is for you to decide. But you have to know that with the ASO agency, it's a little easier because you have just one email to drop telling that, OK, we want to optimize the icon. OK, so you could do this, 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 this. And you just go with that. You just have your graphics artist uh, try those different things. Um, and see if it's working for you or not. You A-B test. But we'll get to A-B testing a little bit later. Um, so yeah. And uh, there's a lot. If you want to optimize yourself, uh, you, there, there's a lot of tools out there to help you optimize yourself. Uh, apps like Sensor Tower, apps like Searchman, and App Annie. All of those are pretty, uh, pretty useful when it comes to keyword research and keyword monitoring. Um, but not only that, uh, AppAni actually serves us a lot more. It's a, it's a huge platform that serves for a lot more than just keyword planning and uh, keyword research and keyword monitoring. Um, and the Sensor Tower as well. And SearchMan is basically a little, little less. It's, it's a lesser Sensor Tower, but it still works. It's only relevant to the US and uh, US, UK, and Japanese markets. So uh, if you can go with Sensor Tower, I strongly suggest you go with Sensor Tower. But Searchman is also there as an alternative. And App Annie is really cool with keywords as well. It gives you basically a different perspective from Sensor Tower. You can check out Sensor Tower, you can check up App Annie, and you, you'll see a little bit different results. So it's useful to use both of these tools. Now, and then there's Stormhaven, Split Metrics, and Testnet. Uh, test nest. Those three are really useful when it comes to A/B testing assets, and you will want to A/B test assets. If you are not doing it already, you will want to do that because uh, the thing that you release with doesn't necessarily mean it's the best thing. Even if you get good results, you can get better, but you need to test those, and we'll get to that later. And uh, then there's Google Play Developer Console and iTunes Connect, which are pretty obvious, though. Uh, but they actually have cool features regarding to App Store optimization, like Google Play, uh, Google Play Developers Console allows you to A-B test assets for free. And for those three here, for Stormhaven, Splitmetrics, and Testness, you actually need to put out a lot of money to test, not only on the service itself, but also on users to test it on. So, and, and Google Play Developer Console actually lets you test on live users uh, on, the, on, on Google Play for your app that is already released. So it's super cool. It's super cool in that sense that it actually lets you test on a live audience. It lets you test the search optimization, which does not happen for 
uh, the other three. Store Maven split metrics and testness allow you to create a fake App Store page, which you go into and uh, we basically distribute the link to users via an ad, for example, a Facebook ad, and they go in there, they check out the fake App Store page, and they decide whether or not they like the, the, the App Store page, whether or not they like the icon, the first two screenshots, and maybe a little bit more, the store description. But it doesn't let you, uh, it doesn't give you results uh, like the Google Play, Developer, Google Play Developer Console does, because Google Play Developer Console actually using experiments there, it lets you see how many users are actually going to go from the search function into the store page. So that's, for me, that's a little bit more important. Obviously, there are situations where you cannot use this function. For example, your app is not released on the App Store yet, on Google Play, so you can't really use that function. Cool, okay, so uh, then you resort to Store Maven, Split Metrics, and Test Nest, uh, because that gives you at least some notion of whether or not your uh, your assets are good or not. But if you have your app released and you're searching for optimization on a released app, then use Google, uh, use the Google Play Developer Console experiments because first of all, it's free. Second of all, it lets you test the search optimization as well and see how users react when they search for your app. Do they find the icon appealing or do they not? Uh, in my opinion, it gives more credible results that way. And then you have iTunes Connect with App Analytics, which is basically an overall tool that any developer, probably every developer, should use. Uh, it just uh, it lets you see how many people download your app, how many people view your App Store page, lets you um, lets you get conversion that way, find out the conversion that you get uh, on in different markets. So it's really useful that way. But it's it's obvious. It's an obvious thing. Everybody should use that. So. So definitely useful tool. So how do you actually start uh, the process of App Store optimization? Uh, basically, you have to answer yourself a couple of questions. What are my product's unique selling points? What do I want the users to, you know, basically what is, uh, what is unique in my app? For example, I'm going to speak from my example because you know I we actually do games, so I have exam so I have an example on my game, uh, which is Real Boxing to Rocky. So what is uh, unique about uh, Rocky? <laughs> well, it is the first authentic exper Rocky experience for mobile, so that's one unique thing to speak of, and uh, you can actually play as Rocky, so that's a unique thing. There's no other game on the App Store that lets you. Let's you play as Rocky, the official Rocky. Obviously, there are apps on the App Store, boxing apps even, that let you play as Rocky Bilbao, but not Rocky Balboa. That's a difference. A little bit of a difference there. Um, that's still funny, though. And uh, then there's the question of which features are the most important. Uh, and okay, so we actually have a cool fighting system that's easy to use based on tap and swipe, so maybe I should communicate that to users, for example. How and where do I want to show those features? Do I want to show fighting already on the icon, uh, or do I want to show it on the screenshot? How many screenshots do I want the, to show the action, actually? Do I want all of them to show the action, or do I want three of them to show the action and use the other two to show menus and player customization? So you need to answer yourself that question. You need to plan that out. Obviously, there's also the app preview, which is going to show everything if you wanted to show everything. Or it's going to show just action if you wanted to show action. You need to plan those things. And uh, what is my app's direct competition doing? Yeah, so that's also really important. So, for example, for us, our direct competition is UFC. And as the product marketing manager, I actually check out UFC from time to time and see what they're doing with those screenshots of theirs. And last time I checked, they actually have one screenshot showing the action and four screenshots showing menus. And I'm wondering what they're doing with that. And uh, then I came to the conclusion, they have a lot of famous faces in their game. So they're showing a lot of famous faces. Instead of showing five screenshots which look oddly similar, they're using variety. So do you want to show variety on your screenshots? You want to show a lot of um, famous faces from the UFC, or do you want to show action and try doing variety there? That is also something that to take into considering. And 
uh, who is my audience and what do they like? This is also an important question. You need to know your, uh, your audience. You need to know what they're going to be looking for. And you, basically, you have to put yourself in the shoes of, um, of a gamer that you want, your ga you want uh, to have playing your game. You need empathy for that. You need to sit down there, look at your app, and think, oh, this is pretty cool. But um, you, you need to figure out whether or not you're looking from a developer's perspective, uh, from a person who's working at that company's perspective, or are you looking from the perspective of a gamer? And that's a really different thing. You need to really go out there. You need to separate yourself from being a developer and think outside the box a little bit. So that's that. And that's that. And that's done. You're, uh, you're super. You've answered all those questions. You've prepared your marketing materials. You're launching your app. You're done. That's the end. Or is it? It's not. It's not because, like I said previously, you, when you release your app, you, oh, you get results. You see that your app is, OK, it's getting up there in the rankings. You're getting featured. And uh, then the featuring ends. And you're going down a little bit, but it's still cool. You see millions of people downloading your games. Woohoo! I'm done. I'm set up for life. No, you're not. No, you're not because those results are going to go down and down and down. You need to optimize for that. You need to keep optimizing. App Store optimization ends when you, well, where, when your life ends, actually. And I don't mean the life of your product. I mean your life. You, if you continue to be a developer for, uh, for mobile games, you're going to be constantly optimizing your App Store page. If you're not, then your app is going to die. Even if you support it, it's going to die. Its visibility is going to go down. You need to account for so many trend changes. Every day, trends change on the App Store. And you need to optimize for that. You need to be ready for that. So you need constantly researching the App Store, researching what's new, what's old, what's, uh, what, what's going on, what's going to happen in two months. You need to know that. So you can never be satisfied with the results you get. You, you need to create variations of those, that initial strategy that answering those questions uh, gives you, and you or, or, or even plan a completely new strategy. You don't have to variate. You don't have to, for example, you, know, uh, you have a screenshot with Rocky in there, and OK, I'm going to substitute Rocky for somebody else, or I'm going to have Rocky fight somebody else. That's just a small variation. What about doing a completely different screenshot? What about doing a screenshot where Rocky is not fighting, but he's standing there all manly and, you know, this epic pose like you see on the covers of game, uh, game covers like, like this? Right? So maybe, maybe, you know, it turns out that this is actually clicking a lot better. You don't know that. You need to test that. You should test that. And you do that by doing A-B test magic. And that is what I talked about previously, like using Google Play experiments or using Stormhaven and TestNest and whatnot. You A-B test your assets. And in the game of ASO, you can never lose, actually. You can, o you can only win. Um, I actually put this slide together to show you that, OK, you can tie. You can lose. But you always win in the end. Because even when you, when you test, you don't lose anything. You, you can only gain. You can only gain this confidence that this asset is actually the best one of the three, for example, that you're testing at this moment. This App Store page, compared to this App Store page that you designed with your graphics artist and with your marketing specialist, this one is the best one. And you apply this one. You don't use this one. You throw it out to the trash, or maybe you know keep it for when the trends change. But you can always win. Oh, you always win with the, in the game of ASO. And here's a small taste test case study that uh, I did with Real Boxing to Rocky. So, uh, so yeah. So this is the initial icon that we started with. This is the initial icon that we started with. Uh, and the aim here with this icon was that we want the icon to show Rocky. We want Rocky. We want Sylvester Stallone from Rocky. We want him to be recognizable. And we came to this. And you know. I'm fairly satisfied with how it turned out. I think it's Rocky-ish. Well, no, I'm, I'm fairly certain it's Rocky. Though, you know, people have a lot of different 
faces of Rocky in their mind. For example, if your favorite movie is Rocky 3, then you see Rocky from Rocky 3. This is actually Rocky from Rocky 3, by the way. Uh, because we came to the conclusion that Rocky 3 is the most recognizable Rocky ever. Right? If you uh, take a look at this, this guy here, that's more of a Rocky 1. He's more, he, he's a little bit fatter on the face, he's a little bit more younger on the face. There's a little bit of a different lighting there. We tried matching the lighting on this icon here. We tried matching it with the poster that actually he's on. Uh, this one is custom lighting that we used on this icon. And then <laughs> this one here, uh, that's, th th that one is terrible. It's actually, we, we changed the background here from this guy. Uh, we changed the uh, the background to be more refer more to the uh, one of the posters for Rocky Three, where there's clouds there and uh, blue sky, and I don't know, um, I don't know what's so appealing with this one, but hell, I, I I didn't know if it's gonna work or not. I just wanted to test it because you know that's one of the more recognizable. When you type in Rocky. This is what pops up in, in Google Images, right? So people see that very often if they're searching for Rocky. So I don't know, it might work. So I decided to test it. And there's this, this one, because you know Rocky is the superhero of the United States, right? He is so, and, and on the posters you see him either um, walking, uh, not walking, um, having, the, uh, having the American flag in his hands, like celebrating the win, or you see him just you know, on the background of the American flag somewhere. Uh, so it's also worth to check out, especially since, like I said in the beginning, you can not only optimize search, uh, the, you, can not on, you can optimize, obviously, text things, like you can localize store description, keywords, and the app name, but you can also localize graphics. And I don't mean just store um, screenshot captions, I mean everything, like the image itself, it can be localized and it actually works, but it only works on Google Play. You can't localize on the App Store though. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a bummer, but still, you know, if you've got a lot of users from Google Play, then this is definitely worth checking out. And the results, basically, this is, this is the results that we get from uh, Google Play experiments. So I've been using that app because, like I said before, I think it provides, when your app is already, already launched, uh, I think it provides uh, the most, uh, the, mo the, the, the definite results that I'm looking for because it shows me how people react when they search for the game. So uh, this is the current version. The audience is 50% and each variant gets 16.7. And uh, then the results are, are all scaled to the 50%. So you get scaled results. They, they're scaled up to match the 50%. And um, it turns out that actually we have one vari variant, the, the cloud variant, that performs terribly. Uh, which was my initial guess that it's going to perform terribly because it doesn't look you know, when I'm looking for a boxing game, I'm not looking for blue skies and clouds. I'm looking for, uh, you know, these dangerous guys that punch each other. So, uh, so I, I thought that it's going to perform terribly, and I was right. But I really wanted to test that. And yeah, cool, okay. But I see two variants, the key art version, that we have the, the younger, the Rocky one, uh, Rocky, and the American flag variant. Uh, are actually performing better, but they're at the same time they're not performing better. You can see that there's a little bit of red here and a little bit of red here, uh, so it's mixed results. It doesn't guarantee that you're gonna get super cool results. It also says that you might get bad results at the same time. So I'm not satisfied with that. So I run another test and I put in more variants because I see that this variant is terrible. So I just swap this. I just swap this variant with a new variant. And what do I come up with? I come up with even more awesome results. Uh, so again, we've got this variant, which is the Rocky 3 Rocky, the Rocky 1 Rocky, and the Rocky American Flag Rocky 1. And then there's this thing, uh, the three characters variant, uh, where we have Rocky, where we have Drago, and where we have Apollo. And oh my god. It's actually performing a lot better than the other alternatives. Why is that? Because you know, one of the best practices that you read about in the internet is have one face on the icon. It's gonna perform better because people see a lot more. 
because you know on the on your device you see a small icon you don't see all the details but it turns out it doesn't matter because people want to see more characters and there's also the case that because of the red and the blue he kind of looks like superman so maybe people think it's a superman game i don't know but i i'm fairly certain that it's rocky here but so so i doubt it's that but that's one of my things that i came up with when i was uh, getting the results and i was like why is this happening it's not the best practice you should Many pages say that you shouldn't do many characters. You should do one character because it's clearer that way. But it turns out it's maybe it's clearer, but people are looking for this icon right now. Maybe it's the trend right now. I don't know. But this is why you A/B test. You want to find out. You want to find out which variants are going to perform the best. So I actually did another test. I just wanted to confirm this is not a fluke. This is the, these. This is the actual thing. This is the Philosopher's Stone that I stumbled upon. And it, you know, I, I don't have the next slide for this. Uh, I didn't want to bore you with another slide because it's going to look the same. It basically looked the same with the difference that here I got 6.6% and there I got 29%. So it even, the, the results were even better on the three character variant, right? So this is the icon that we're going to be using for real boxing to Rocky when you search for it uh, somewhere along the next update which we are going to release. So that's well, uh, when we're going to switch up the icon unless the A-B testing proves that another variant is better. And I've actually been testing another variant, which I, I substituted Apollo with Clubber Lang from Rocky 3. And I can a little bit of a spoiler warning here. It actually performs eh, somewhere around the same. But the results, you know, the result, you, you always need to test against the best performing variant. And I was testing it against this variant. I tested this icon against this variant, and I tested the icon with Clubber Lang here. I tested it against this variant as well. So the results don't say all that much. It only confirms that the three character variant is the best. But it doesn't confirm that Clubber is going to perform better than Apollo. So when we switch up this icon with this icon, when, we, when this is going to become the default icon for the game, I'm going to keep testing and I'm going to check whether or not Clubber Lang is actually more popular because, you know, logic, logic makes me think that it's actually, he's going to be more popular because, you know, it's Mr. T. Mr. T is everywhere. Everybody knows Mr. T. Fools. Right? So, um, so yeah. So, I'm going to keep A-B testing and you should too. If you start A-B testing, you never stop because you can... Uh, trends on the App Store and on Google Play and on any other digital platform, they change daily. Right, so what are some of the best practices that you use? And again, you shouldn't always consider you know, best practices to be the best practices because it varies a lot. Like I said, the, one of the best practices was show the, f show the face of the character. Right? Show the, f show the face of one character, make him angry, and it's going to sell like hot buns from a bakery every morning. But it turns out the free character variant is better. So not all best practices are going to work for your game. Right? It depends. So like, again, uh, for search optimization, so you know, the app name, the, uh, the keywords, and, uh, and the store description. Here are some of the best practices I yeah, I, I tested, I tried out, I learned about during my career as an App Store optimization evangelist. Uh, include the most important keywords in the app name. Uh, because the, the app name is actually, you know, basically keywords that you put in on iTunes Connect, they're of a lower value than the app name itself. The app name uh, has the most valuable keywords, should have the most valuable keywords, and they're going to set you up. This is what's going to set you up, even if you use high difficulty keywords. Like, for example, I wouldn't suggest using game, though. Uh, game is a very high difficulty keyword that only Supercell can actually be placed number one on. And I, I, I don't even know if they're placed number one on game, because every game uses game. Um, and uh, so, for example, you know, uh, for real boxing, too, like, I'm going to refer to our product again. Re uh, boxing is a super important keyword for us. It's in the name. We're placed number two on this keyword. M the only reason why we were placed number uh, number two on boxing is because of real boxing one. So <laughs> doesn't matter all that much. 
Uh, then there's Rocky, right? We'll, uh, we are placed number one on Rocky as well. And when we launched Real Boxing to Creed, uh, which was the predecessor to Real Boxing to Rocky, um, we are, we've been actually placed on number one on, on Creed, which is super important because people are searching for Assassin's Creed, right? And they're gonna stumble upon Rocky and maybe they're gonna download my game. That's awesome. So always put the most important keywords in your app name but don't make spammy titles. You don't want to have titles that says Real Boxing to Rocky, the ultimate Rocky game for mobile, uh, UFC, Tekken, whatever. You don't want to create those titles. Those titles are bad. And what's more important is App Store is increasingly rejecting uh, those kind of titles. So you really shouldn't be wanna do, you really shouldn't be wanna doing that if you want to keep your app on the App Store. And uh, also use keywords relevant to your app's genre. You don't want to use, for, for example, for real boxing, the word ring. Uh, when you think of ring, you, you know, in the context of a boxing game, you think of the arena that people are fighting on. That's cool. But the app store doesn't think that. The app store actually thinks that when you write in ring there, you're actually looking for a wedding ring or some sort of ring. So you're go your app is going to be visible for apps for rings. And you don't, you, you don't I, I doubt people when they when they are searching for a wedding ring that they eh, maybe I'm gonna play some a boxing game at the same time. But you know what? You know what 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 works? Boxing ring. So you have boxing and you have ring and it actually combines together and it works. But if you didn't have boxing in there, which I doubt, uh, it actually wouldn't work for you. But boxing game works. Each keyword has the potential to combine with another keyword of the whole set that you have. So you need to plan out your keywords in this, you know, you have to keep this in mind when you plan your keywords that they're gonna combine. So for example, you have fight, why not add night in there? You don't write fight night as one keyword, you just type in fight and type in night because you know, there was a game called fight night, for example, and people are, else are still looking for it. Be, and maybe they're, you know, fight night is also a popular term in boxing itself. So use that knowledge. Um, also, prioritize lower difficulty keywords. Unless you know that you're gonna get super major featuring on the App Store, you need to plan for lower difficulty keywords because it's easier to get visibility on those than on high, uh, than on high difficulty keywords like game, which everybody uses. Make your description to the point. You don't want to have long description that people are gonna keep reading and reading. You don't want to write a novel. You want a short to the point description. Localize your keywords and titles because that's super important. You have to localize them because, you know, like, I don't know, people in France want to play a localized game and that's going to make them download the game more. Uh, avoid reusing the vault language keywords in other languages because the vault language keywords are actually, they actually apply to all uh, to all markets. So, for example, you don't want to be using the same keywords from the US, if US is your devout language, you don't want to be using those in, in Spain because uh, Spain, um, no, Spain, you know, the devout language keywords are going to be used all throughout every market, including Spain, France, everywhere in the world. So you want to localize those keywords, those keywords for other languages to get more visibility there. And then there's also this case. This, is actually, this was actually funny to me. Spanish keywords also apply for the US listing because of Mexico. So use that to your advantage. If, for example, Span Spain is not your main market, then how about using Spain to get more visibility in the US? So you put in English keywords there that are different from the default language keywords, but you, know, you can maximize your US visibility that way. That's super cool. I didn't know that. When I learned that, it blew my mind. And then there's conversion optimization, which is a little bit different because it refers to visuals. So you have to differentiate your icon from the competition. So instead of, for example, you know, when, uh, when you see uh, Clash of Clans, Clash Royale, Mobile uh, uh, Fire Age, that Fire Age game that I keep forgetting the first uh, part of the name of. They're all, they have characters which are shouting, which are looking the same way, and then there's Mobile Strike, which basically just said, screw you, I'm gonna be looking on the other side. And you know, when you type in strategy games, you see all those three games, all those four games, and one stands out because he's looking the other way. So differentiate yourself from the competition. Characters looking at the user perform better. This is also important. Keep eye contact with the user. 
it actually does perform better. I've tested it on real boxing to Creed. I've had Creed placed on the left side, which was looking slightly odd to the left compared to you know when I placed him in the center when he's looking straight on the user, and that icon actually performs better. So keep the eye contact on the user. Uh, this is what I said before. The two first screenshots are the most important because this is what's going to pop up on the search results on the App Store. So those two screenshots have the same importance as your icon because they can convince your user to download the game instantly. Uh, also, if you use app previews, then you're not going to have two screenshots. You're going to have one app preview and one screenshot. So plan for that as well and pick a good frame for the app preview. The first frame is going to serve as a screenshot, kind of a. Um, use closer framing on screenshots, especially if your game uh, is action-oriented or a strategy game. You want to show uh, the user what's going on on the screenshot. He's not going to see that on his device. He can't zoom in on the action. So you want to show him the action as close as possible. This is super important for, I think, for almost all genres apart from puzzle games, I think. Employ did I miss one? Showing content. Yeah, showing content variety is important. So make your screenshots various. You don't want to. Uh, you don't want to show screenshots which all show. For example, for boxing games, they all show an uppercut from the right side. So mix it up. Like for example, adding in a straight punch, a jab. Maybe try a dodge. Maybe try a parry. Maybe do something else. Maybe show a knockout from time to time. Change it up because that's important. Players want to know everything there is about your game, so maybe even throw in a menu showing player customization, maybe throw in some skin menu, something like that, because that's going to make them think that there's a lot of content, and there should be a lot of content in your game, so why not show it? Employ a call to action in screenshot captions. So when you write in, for example, fight is rocky, right? Make sure it's a Make sure it's a call to action. Make sure that players want to go in there and fight as Rocky. So type in fight as Rocky Balboa. Don't type in player uh, Rocky Balboa as playable character. That's not a call to action. That's not attractive. You want the, the players to you know, see the screenshot and get in there and uh, fight as Rocky Balboa. Become world champion, things like that. Localize the icon and screenshots beyond captions. So don't, don't just localize those uh, captions on the screenshots where, where you place them. Instead, uh, localize your visuals. Make the icon, for example, if you release your, uh, if, if we, uh, one of the ideas that I had is Fisher Drago on the icon because of Russia. Rocky is not a hero for Russia. He's actually the anti-hero. Drago is the hero for Russia, so featuring him should increase you know, the CTRs, and it actually you know, does, uh, as I've uh, showed you on the, uh, the A-B test. That's probably that's what probably one of the reasons why we had more positive results, and uh, the same goes for screenshots. Maybe f in Russia, feature Drago uh, fighting Rocky instead of uh, Rocky fighting a random guy or Apollo, and A/B test as early as you can. This is super important. Don't wait for the game to release. If you can test before, use Stormaven, use the test nest, use uh, split metrics, and test before you release. Don't wait for the game to release. Uh, and start testing there. And basically the takeaway is that App Store optimization is important. If you don't optimize your assets, you're going to end up with a product that has potential, but it doesn't realize it. And it's not that the game is bad, it's because it doesn't have enough visibility. You want to provide the game optimal visibility. Having been featured is not the only thing that can give you visibility. A very good optimization strategy and very good marketing assets can give you a lot of visibility themselves. So, just do it. Don't wait. Uh, don't wait until your game releases. Don't wait until uh, the, it's too late. And that, that's it. And that's it. Yes, okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much.